What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Home Tour Podcast. It's me, Hunter Mitchell, joined here by my co-hosts... Braxton Dora. Justin Chen. And for the first time this semester, and oh man, am I so giddy, we finally get to talk about basketball. My sport, talked about it last semester a little bit. I, I kept accidentally getting off on tangents about basketball before it even began, but now it's here and we can finally talk about it. And what a time to start talking about it. Uh, both men's and women's trending in the right direction. Uh, in fact, we'll hop right in talking about the about the women's team before we get back into a, and I'm talking about the men's team and the weekend they had, uh, the weekend I had, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, I have i don't want to say I told, maybe not y'all, but I just the world, A&M people, Aggies. I told you so. I... I've written, I think, probably two or three articles about how Joni Taylor was going to take this team to be something for real. And there's something for real right now. They're projected into the tournament. Um, they're in the last four buys. Um, kind of similar to where the men's team was. Um, but, you know, they, they've they've really shown up, I think, in the last couple of weeks. Um, I mean, that win over Ole Miss two games ago was was huge. I mean, going on the road to Ole Miss, a very solid team, a very well-coached team, and, I mean, the final score isn't even kind of – it was almost at, like, 30 at one point. Um, and then gritting it out on the road at Kentucky, um, Janiah Barker and India Rogers are heating up as of late. Um, it's a it's it's getting to the point now where, you know, you don't want to say it, but, but you know, A&M could, could – it is looking likely that they, they will have both men's and women's teams in the NCAA tournament, which is something that, man, I feel like recently for me has uh, that, that, you know, personally that has not been aligned. We've been missing out for sure. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I can't even remember the last time that was true. You know, it's just like one team's doing good. The other team's on the downfall trying to recover. It's always been one or the other. And now they're, they're both looking like they're getting it together. Yeah. I'm sure that if we look back, uh, cause I mean, men's basketball had that weird stretch where with Billy Kennedy, where it was one year on one year off one year on one year off. Um, so we'd have to look in the line and of course, and then you see Gary Blair, um, taking them, you know, pretty consistent up until near the end. But yeah, I mean, it, it hasn't been a conversation that's been had for, for a while, but you know, it, it's it's good to see because I think I think A and M benefits as a whole when probably what has historically been one of their more successful, at least under Gary Blair, you know, one of the most successful sports, uh, one of the one of the most recent national championships in twenty eleven. I I think what has been so enjoyable about this team so far this season is that you're really seeing Joni Taylor's identity in this team. And Justin was talking a little bit about it before the podcast about how in, in a way, both these teams are, are the men's and the women's teams kind of near each other in, in a way. Um, and I mean, they're both, they're both tops in the country in offensive rebounding. Um, but I mean, yeah. So like, what, what, what do you think about that, Justin? Well, again, it starts with, uh, Joni Taylor. And if you go back to last season, even though it was, you know, not the best season, she just kept heart. Like, she knew that, you know, this year was going to be, you know, the year for uh, for A&M. And it's showing, you know, with the top 20 defense, like, they're harping on defense. There's not a clear-cut number one option, but everyone's on the same page. It's you know, uh, In my eyes, it's very similar to, like, you know, as you said, uh, the, uh, uh, all the men's team, especially with Buzz, and his ideology of, uh, of defense and whatnot. It's, I don't know, it's, it's also... I feel like it's very similar to softball to where both, you know, second year coaches have a lot of trust and a lot of confidence in their team in the second year. And, you know, so far it's been, uh, it's, it's been both uh, paying off. Yeah. And, and I, I think coach Taylor really, um, you, you made the softball reference again. I kind of like that. Cause I think coach Taylor in a way also has showed her hand uh, this season with, with who she picked up in the transfer portal. She could have easily said, "Okay, you know, we're going to keep building on, you know, a young class, bringing some promising transfers." Um, but she went out and grabbed, you know, graduate India Rogers, uh, junior Lauren Ware, senior Aisha Kulabali. You know, she she really, she really flexed her guns and said, "We're we're going for this this year now." Um, and I love to see that strike first mentality, and it's really paying off. And and I mean, 
they're in last four buys right now. Looking ahead at their schedule, they this is this is a schedule that can either be very good or very bad for them. Truthfully, that's how it is. I mean, that's kind of the that's kind of the stakes you run. Um, it's the name going, of the game. Yeah, going into <laughs> March, especially in like the SEC, is that you know you 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 could surely go up against these really tough teams and lose, but you can also go up against them and take advantage of those of those opportunities and win and bump your seat up a lot. I mean, you get you get Vanderbilt at home next. Uh, LSU is a big one. Yeah, and you know, don't you know, no, no slouch to to Vandy either. I mean, they're eighteen and seven as well. That's a good resume booster. And then, like Justin said, you get LSU at home too. Um, that's two really big home games that you'd love to take advantage of. Um, then you get again a, a, a third home game in a row, which is it's super uncommon uh, against a good Arkansas team that's seventeen and eight. So you get three really good home opportunities there. That can really boost your your uh, seed line. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, no, those are must wins for this women's program right now. I mean, it's it's how they punch their ticket at this point. I mean, it's how they're gonna get the respect that uh, maybe doesn't fall, you know, quite into their seeding like right right now. Like maybe, you know, you see the five and five the in conference. You see that they've had their struggles so far, but they, they've been getting it together. Like, like you said, their their transfers are a big part of their program, just like just like softball. You know, they they're in a win now mentality, and so it's they're trying to cultivate that culture. And I, I mean, and don't get me wrong, they they've they've been really the catalyst for this entire season so far. But I think that the the biggest key recently in these past two games, especially that has been towards their success has actually not been a transfer. I, th- I think Janiah Barker coming in and really, I mean, she's, she lit it up the past couple of games and, and she's making some shots that, I mean, she, there was uh, during that Kentucky game. I remember she's, she blows me away with her uh, fadeaway shots. It, it's, it's nuts. And she hit one uh, in that Kentucky game. That was just like, I, you know, I watched it a couple of times cause it, it was, it was, it was, Good stuff, and it shows why she was the number two overall recruit in a recruiting class. You know, and she had some injury last year, a little bit of injury this year, banged up. But I mean, you look at AM last game, and to go back to Justin's balanced attack, I mean, Janiah Barker 15, India Rogers 14, Aisha Kulabali four, or 14, Lauren Ware 8. You know, it's like they're really punching you from all sides, and uh, India Rogers can hit it from deep. Um, she's also has a really sneaky drive, I think. Aisha Kulabali kind of, you know, if you want to relate it to, like, the men's team, she plays a little bit probably like Boots. Uh, she's pretty downhill, pretty tough, can, like, hold her own in the paint. Um, and then Lauren Ware, man, she's she's been so important grabbing boards. Just physical all around, just uh, all around that net, you know, just – I mean, even the even the blocks too. I mean, oh yeah, she's been she's been huge defensively. I mean, you look at and then you want to talk about the Ole Miss performance. I mean, look what she did at Ole Miss. You know, she grabs eleven boards at Ole Miss, puts up twenty points, and another double double. I mean, that's something that they really lacked last season is that big post presence. I think that you know they, you had Jada Malone, but other than that, like you didn't have someone down there that was was quick to jump on a guard that's driving, you know, put their hands up, get a block or, you know, grab a, grab a board, grab an offensive rebound. And I think it's, it's, it's paying dividends, but, you know, looking forward to that schedule, that is, that is a rough schedule, but you know, that's if you look at it from a glass half empty standpoint, I think if you're looking at it from the Aggie standpoint, I think how, you know, coach Taylor's probably her mentality, she would say is, is there's a lot of opportunities going, coming ahead. Uh, Cause then, you know, after you get that three game home stretch, then you go, to Auburn, um, who has been, you know, shout out to Auburn for their for their women's basketball attendance. I mean, they've been really showing up for women's basketball. And that's huge. Um, well, you've already beaten them once, and then you're uh, you got Tennessee, who the same way. And then Tennessee is uh, Tennessee is also right next to you in that last f- four buys as well. So that's another two opportunities, and then you know, then it's. Alabama, who's just casually nineteen and seven right now, um, and then you got SEC tournament. <laughs> so like you have, you have a, a major gauntlet coming up uh, for women's basketball. But 
but you also look at it like there's that many opportunities to yeah. improve your resume, you know? I mean, there's that many deciding games. I mean, let's say, let's say, you know, in a vacuum, you you win two, you win two out of three of your next three game home stretch, right? So that's two and one. You split, you split Auburn and Tennessee. That's three and two. And then let's say you beat Bama. That's four and two. And that puts you at, and that puts you at what? 21 to eight. Yeah. 21 and eight. That's, with, that's conference. That's a huge yeah, no, that's from last season too. Like, yeah, absolutely. That's insane. Put you at 21 and eight with wins over, over, uh, you know, a. Uh, a fair amount of teams there in the field. I think that bumps you probably from, you know, they're in right now as, as last four buys. I mean, you know, that could, I feel like that could even, even push you up to, that could put them up to like an eight or maybe even a seven. They're sitting at 10 right now, which also in the, in the, uh, where is this? Iowa city. Oh, Man. <laughs> or Albany. Oh, sorry, they're, they're in Albany. Man, sorry, women's women's bracket throws me off. Yeah, it's it's a lot different. Yeah, man, Albany. Heesh. Oh, that's a that's a rough, interesting, that's a rough, notorious <laughs> basketball <tough> trip. <laughs> basketball powerhouse. Jesus. You know, yeah, City Albany. Shout them. You know, they love their basketball. Um, but I mean, that's a right now projected to play Michigan State. In uh in that bracket, which mm. which they you know you know looking at hypotheticals right now, take care of Michigan State. Um, then you would you'd most likely get UCLA. Cool. Which that's, and that's a that's a that's rough, always a powerhouse. That's yeah. a that's a rough matchup that's right a, there. That's a that's a fun matchup. Ooh. Um, but again, it's 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 nice to see you know talking about the women's team, you know, um. And from a standpoint of, of they can go on, they can get wins now, and they're racking up wins, and they're getting hot at the right time. Um, yeah, but what better time? Yeah, I than mean, right before March. Yeah, I mean, right. Come on, right before, right before you get this this real gauntlet. But I think the most important part, I mean, is is taking advantage of your whatever little home games you have left. Um, if you can, if you can go two and zero against like Tennessee and Auburn, who are both teams in the field, you're looking real pretty. That's looking really good. That mean that's that means a lot. Um, I honestly like the wins. You know, taking care of business at home is great, but getting wins on the road like that against teams you already beaten. Because I I say it for every sport, it, it's it's so, one thing to beat them once; it's a whole another thing so to win the series. Hard, so hard to beat a team twice. I mean, it, it like it 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 has to happen. You know, like eventually. Um, but it's so hard to beat a team twice. It, it's tough, and so like when you do that, you know, home and away. It's big stuff. I mean, you're gonna have to keep getting performances from uh, Lauren Ware. Uh, she's gonna have to keep being. She she is the post presence right now. Would you compare her to uh, Garcia on the men's side? Well, who who would you compare her as? I think she's. I think she's probably better defensively than than I would think so than too. Anderson Garcia. I think she's I a lot so. more of a defensive threat. I think she's top. I have to look. I definitely think she's top. Ooh, I don't want to. I don't want to get anything wrong here, but I think she's top fifty in the in the country in, um, in boards and boards. But I think blocks. Actually, yes, I bl- I want to say she is. Look, I did cover a women's game once, so I I want to say that I. <laughs> yeah, she's tied for thirty seventh in the country in blocks. Yeah, so oh, I, yeah. oh, absolutely. I yeah. would definitely say that she's probably better defensively. I think she does have that board grabbing capability, um, but. I, yeah, I definitely think she's like she's she's giving them a very big defensive threat. Um, and then I think even like pair that and like in tandem with with Janaya Barker, who is you know she's a she's a forward unquote you know, but she's like <laughs> she plays like a guard. Oh, absolutely, and, and she's defends, so flexible. Defends like a forward, you know. She like makes some crazy acrobatic shots. She can show she can now you know she's getting her shot from deep. Um, it's. It's kind of all gelling together, but I think the most important thing is staying healthy. You know, India Rogers went down a little bit in that uh, at the end of that Kentucky game. Hope she's doing all right, and and the Aggies hope she's doing all right because I think that's been the biggest thing this season. One of the biggest things is that, um, you know, having that that floor general, that person directing, that person you know saying getting the plays in and and calming the storm and and making big shots like she does. Um, I mean, just a leader, just a leader on the yeah. court. I mean, and then like. I mean, they lost the Florida game, but she opened 
she opened the the second half of that Florida game like scoring like eight points in a row mm-hmm. by herself. So having someone that the capability to take over a game, just say, all right, this is you know, it stops now. Um, it's a dog mentality. It's big. <laughs> it's very big. And uh, I don't want to go. Ahead, oh, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but <laughs> I'm looking at LSU right now. I, I think it's very doable because Ooh. LSU isn't as strong as last year, of course. Oh, like, absolutely not. Like I, I think they lost their first game right right away against like Colorado. Like yeah. this is a very yes, that was a, that was a huge not the upset. Best gelled LSU team, like, especially compared to last year. And with our top twenty defense, if we mm. just if we just hold down you know their stars, then I think especially in front of a home crowd. If we yeah. can get if, again, if we could get Pack Reed again, then I think you know I think that game is, you know, pretty I think winnable. the I think the score of the first time they played LSU was a little bit deceiving. I think it got away from them late, but if you watch the majority of that game, they were they were going blow for blow for a while. So I think that yeah, like you mentioned, Justin, that home, that home environment is 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 so crucial. You just and need Barstool again, you know. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> Post. <laughs> yeah, Pack Reed, wide out, you know. Um, the Turtles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> everybody on, uh, everybody hands on deck. Yeah, speak, sorry, side side tangent. You notice they have like, they have an Instagram account now. I, yes, I actually, I actually it's, know one of the guys. He was would. in, he, <laughs> he was in one of my sport management classes. So uh, yes, I, I definitely know the guy. Uh, shout like, out to Sammy. Sport management, they <laughs> always uh, have. It's turtles and what? Like a, uh, I a saw Grinch. Like, uh, it's like a, a Grouch. Grinch in a, uh, uh, a guy in a watermelon costume, too. God, yeah, they, they do, they do so much I was stuff. Like, I, he, I think he took a picture. With <laughs> There's so many, like, uh, no so many stuff happening for uh, at Reed Arena. No. So if we can get you know that type of hype in, in this woman's game against LSU, I don't know. I don't want to you know, say we're going to win, but, again, it's it's very doable. I mean, huge. I think, I think you beat – I think if you beat LSU, and yeah, I know, but I mean, that's what we do. You gotta call it sometimes. Yeah, you gotta call your. Sh- hey, sometimes you just yeah, gotta go for call it. Call your shot. I say you. I say if you beat LSU, Alabama. If you drop only one game of the stretch, you oh are, oh you're, this oh, is, you're, you're sitting you, pretty. It's 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 yeah. Uh, you're it's an easy field. you're an easy lock. But I think LSU has you sitting at pretty 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 comfortably in. I think. Um, but it's all about taking care of business. And speaking of taking care of business, the other team that plays at Reed seriously took care of business oh, this past week. Did they ever? It was a highlight reel for like but, oh my goodness. Before we Down get goes big blue. <laughs> before we get in talking about, about the men's team, I'm giving a quick PSA to everyone who knows any sports journalist, fan, super anything. Do not. Do not Schedule your wedding on a Saturday. <laughs> Saturday evening, right? Where, where it was for the entire day. It, right? was, it was all day. Oh I, God! Like, it was like, do not college football in the in do not, in the fall. Eh, no spring negative. Mm-mm. No summer then. <laughs> summer, so, well, summer, summer, Come on, co- just college, be summer college world series. <laughs> yeah, there is a mind. there is a there is like a one and a half month window. Where there's no college sports, that's when you do your wedding. I know it's Texas. It's hot. Get over it. Inside. They make it the indoors. Do not. Do not have your wedding for the, for the love on a of weekend. God. <laughs> so, like, how bad was it? Like, <sighs> shout, out, shout out to Morgan and Alex Norton. Congratulations. Lovely couple. Loving the bits. Closest friends. Man my the the my heart dropped when i looked at the schedule and i saw february 10th and i went oh my god tennessee that's when they play tennessee home. oh my and then watching that game it was such it was such a mix of 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 oh, this team is so for real it's so exciting to watch and i want to throw up cuz i could have been there covering this game <laughs> and writing about Neil, this game. I was shout out Neil. Shout out Neil. I was about to say shout out, shout out Neil. Good job. He, he filled in my steed. Uh, did a, did a bang up job. But man, <laughs> selfishly, I want to be there so. <laughs> Gotta bad. hurt. Gotta stand. <laughs> and then that Jace Carter dunk. <sighs> oh, oh my goodness, man. Oh, dude, it's, God. Dude, I don't know. Like I want to go to one of these games. Granted, I'm a little bit lazy, but just watching it on TV, <laughs> you still feel the energy. I'm just like, oh my Bro, god, you can on, just I... you can just feel the yeah. just the the pure vibe at Reed is just unbeaten. It's oh yeah. So God, Texas A&M, 
welcomes in Tennessee to town, a team that, you know, last season, that was also a crazy environment, crazy atmosphere last year when they played. But this year, you know, uh, be honest with you, I was terrified. And they play him again, so I'm not going to say was terrified. I still kind of am. Dalton Connect, that guy is cold. Cool. I, I is he? Off game <laughs> us, right? like he, but for, all, but for all, all intents and purposes, he did not play his absolute best against AM. He had 22, but scored six in kind of garbage time where they're, you know, unquote coming back <laughs> and they have like a minute left and they're still that was, down. Like, that was, that was, uh, yeah. And then the coach called timeout. I was like, and bro, then, let it go. Bro. And then they Come just on. inbounded. Yeah. Just that trying was, to cling, oh cling to hope. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> all intents and purposes, didn't have his best game, but I mean, it it was it was firing all c- cylinders. Wait, he still he still pulled up numbers on my fantasy, so I was I was still happy. <sighs> I did not realize, but all of his shots made were from three. He missed like the rest of his shots. Really? Yeah. He, I'm what was his, his field goal? Six for fifteen, but his Ooh. three point line was six for eleven. So he, he, like he, he's not down for three, but if you take a step inside, no. I guess he just 15. was off that night for uh, for not th- non three. Hey, uh, leave it up to the A and M sticky defense. You know they're just. You know, they're some of the best in the country. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, the one guy that really, really has surprised me about how big of a step back he's taken for that Tennessee team this year has been Santiago Vescovi. That Mm. guy gave A&M fits for what feels like six years at this point. (laughs) Seven, eight years. Oh, my God. Them them (laughs) graduates, man. Wait, when? He he played in 2019. Like, that's his first year. So he's been like, Jesus. It's like fifth or sixth year. I was being, six, six I was being, player, I yeah. thought I was being hyperbolic at no. least, but I, I guess <laughs> not. Year. Sweet, oh gosh, I feel like he's been going crazy against us for I since I can remember, but you know, did not has has not this year and did not yeah, really this do year's anything. Been his worst year, like overall, I I don't know how, but I mean, I think the I think what perfectly summed it up was that Chase Carter wedging the uh, the block into the into the side of the rim and he just tumbles on the ground and rolls and and you know i i think that when you when a&m did a wonderful job at shutting shutting down connect and then forced everyone else to have to make plays that's just the confidence is out the window yeah like. yeah like the they they were playing with reckless abandon and i think the best possible way i think that when you look at the beginning of the season and you look at the expectations, et cetera, I think they came out really rigid and they were trying to play how a top 25 team should look, not how they play. It was like very safe and they're very, yes. like it was, I don't know. It's like some days both Radford or Taylor, it's like one person didn't know, like, you know, one person wanted the other person to score. And yeah. now it's like, once they realize they're both, you know, the number one and two options, then it's been smooth sailing from there. And then Anderson Garcia, He's oh my goodness, man! <laughs> yeah, he's, he, he's another he's another beast. I mean, he's just he is, and I've said this in some of my recaps. I, he is the most valuable player on that A and M roster. Oh, hands down, he's giving one hundred and twenty percent effort every single play. He's going to be chasing after every board, whether he gets it or not. Most of the time, he doesn't get it. He's spiking it <laughs> like a like a yeah. like a wing <laughs> spiker. He, he, he just he reminds of me of. Rodman. I mean, he just like his relentlessness. I mean, yeah, his stat line. You know, his like, relentlessness just it, reminds like me of six him. points, ten rebounds, twenty yeah. rebounds. I'm like, no, bro. seriously, yeah, he, it's he's, crazy. he is very. I mean, he's seventeen against Tennessee. Like that's. Oh my goodness. That's nuts. I mean, that is very like college I mean, they, ball. That's crazy. They call him the Dominican Rodman. I mean, mm-hmm. like, like, oh, yeah, he's gonna half of them on offense too. Yeah, insane. Which is which is so hard to do. I mean, just. He, consistently, he has a wonderful knack of tracking shots and identifying where, if it misses, where it's going to go. Oh yeah, the, rig, think, the ricochet tracking. He's just he's there. He's he's in that spot. All right, I mean you know, and his his wingspan. Yeah, just makes it so and much easier for him. It, it sounds funny to say, but I think, I think how his size, how small he is, benefits him. Oh yeah, I mean I think you're able to sneak around. Yes, people. exactly. And plus he has vert too. That's a thing. yeah, exactly. You're small and vert. You just go around people, and then you just, you know, tip every, every tip just goes to half court, basically. You know, like if, he's, or t- if, he's se- if he's 7'3", you know, it's hard to lose a 7'3 guy. But, you know, sometimes you're boxing out, and you're like, okay, no one's getting behind me. And you got Henry Coleman down there, so it's like, yeah. he just, like, I don't know. it's he, he, has, he just has a knack of weaving through people, finding where he needs to be and being there. And mm-hmm. I think that's, that's what's benefited Wade, who, you know, 
it's needless. It goes out saying, "Shout out Wade Taylor, man! What a starting five for five. That's huge. Oh, from three to from all three, from five. Three, oh yeah. my goodness! Just like you, it, it, you got a feeling after that point when you know when he's hot, it's going to be a very probably a very bad day for whoever he's playing. Oh, absolutely! Um, it's a nightmare for defenses yeah, every you time. You have boots in the inside. It's just like you know, how do you stop that? If yeah. you have a guy who's shooting five for five from three, and then boots who's just relentlessly attacking. Mm. Oh my goodness! And then you have you know Wade Taylor, Naismith Player of the Year up to this last week. Uh, boots, SEC player of the of the week, you know it's it's all coming together. <laughs> it it really is. It, it really does feel like they're like turning turning a page almost, especially with you know Radford injured for a large part of the year. Just felt like he was playing very safe, but now he's getting back to that where he is driving, he is committing to getting into the lane, getting free throws or making really finally difficult finally making basket. them consistently. Yes, oh my and goodness. and. And you know, you're seeing it with Wade too. They're they're driving the hoop and they're and they're I hate to sound cliche or like Henry Coleman. It's Texas A&M basketball. It's not it's not pretty by any means. It's hard. Oh no! Nose. It's like this is exactly what Buzz wants. Yes, this it is, is. Oh my goodness! It is diving on the ground. It is it is it is it's physical basketball. Seeing three people in the lane in front of you and going into them, and, going through them. Yeah. And, oh yeah. In defense, they're swarming already. Like I remember that first half, they're already swarming at half court. Like, and I don't know how like. It wasn't even too long in the game, but if you apply that pressure early, oh, they press, they press constantly. Everything. Yeah, and my favorite thing to do is is to look at when these big wins and things are posted online and seeing what people are saying about a team that they are, have no affiliation with. And I think a lot of people um, have took note as well of of the role players, Solomon Washington, Anderson oh. Garcia, are filling their roles like. They're the catalyst to this offense and defense. I mean, they're they're just the catalyst. It it doesn't work without them Seems and what solo, they do. Clap his hands, getting all hyped. Like as a as a you know as a fan, how do you not get hyped? You know, I, I can't even imagine what that feeling is. Yeah, seeing that every day on the team. Like he's like, mm-hmm. you oh, as his your, teammate. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, like it's it's an insane feeling to like like watch. So I'm just go all out on defense, you know. It's like small little things. I mean, and that's what he built his identity on from from high school. Even <laughs> I mean, that was <laughs> that, like that one trash talk clip. Yeah, and I mean, it, offers his nickname, uh, the the five star stopper. You know, that's like you know he he's built so his identity tough. on on defense for since since he's being recruited. And I mean, it really shows. I mean, he does have a knack for getting in foul trouble. Um, but when he when he's staying out of foul trouble and staying consistent, it's. It's it's everyone's falling into their their niche and finding their spot and I think when you have boots and Wade consistently scoring and providing consistent offense and then you have you know like like the Jace Carters that are making uh, clutch threes and baptizing people. <laughs> um, I didn't think I did not think he was gonna like actually yam that. I was like no, no. I, like. He took a couple no steps one did. out, and I was like, "Okay, it's gonna be a little late, or like you know, pass out." Now he just goes straight up for us. Like, okay, it's what happens when <laughs> like you have the game a, was done at that point? I feel like it what happens just, when you have oh a guard God. that big, man. Yeah. It's what happens? Oh, yeah, like that's like that. All of it's falling into place for A and M, and I think it, at the right time, the most important thing is not losing your identity. Now, mm-hmm. I think it's keeping that identity. I think if A and M manages to, you know, boots drive and. He is he is one of the clutches like like I don't know almost like a run stopper. I can't name how many times that a team goes on a run and it's like oh man here they come and then Boots goes down does his a- dribble and one or something oh, yeah my does God. his dribble does his step back three <laughs> hits it or yeah he like hits the layup gets the end one you know he is just a walking highlight reel. He mm-hmm. is a he's a very good knack of of of. Stopping that run, like stifling yeah. momentum of the other team. He's mm-hmm. very good at at, and I think that that that's a leadership quality thing too. Is is recognizing okay when I need to step up and and get my team rallied around and back together, and then Wade, you know, he just he follows suit. He just it's, does his oh, thing too. Yeah, and so those two offensive weapons are great. You know, you you do like seeing production from like Jace. That's big. Um, you need that third guard to step in as well, and then your role guys are. Are filling their spots, and you know, if you get Henry stepping up as well, you know, we even talked about Henry. Um, he's been quiet the past couple of games, but I mean, he's always got that capability of going for twenty something in a game. That he's got that, he's got that huge frame, but the ability to catch in the paint, and you know, he he does this little jelly roll. 
Um, the talent's there. He's just got to find his night. You know, yeah. he's just got to find his shots. And he's been, you know, he's been coming off a little bit of a bug as well, a little bit injury. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's working his way back as well. But you know, it, it's it's a very promising sign. But the the most important thing is to keep going forward. You can't get lost in that, especially going to Vanderbilt, which them in Missouri, two of the worst teams in the SEC. Like you, you cannot play down to your level. No, you, you can't. Just you, blow them you out. Know. You know, just yeah. get them out the way. Play, play. Just, just play. Show the team. Show that you're the same team that just yeah. faced off against Rockets. Exactly. You know, and I then mean, just show it. And then you get a huge game after that, going to Alabama. Who? Yeah. Galusa, who? Ooh. Last time you played at Alabama, that was the game that kind of momentum bounced you into possible NCAA tournament conversation. You Ultimately, know, didn't get in that year, uh, but that was like your game that pushed your momentum forward. And I mean, looking at that game, you know. Alabama's offense can beat anybody, but their defense is more than suspect. So I think that well, that's just characterized how they've looked for the past few years. I was years. gonna say that, that's, that's that's Alabama for you. At the end of the day, that's Nate Oates, and if that's what he likes, man, go for it. I mean, he had that bit with Herb Jones. Um, well, and they have that scoring capability. They've had stars. Yeah, you know, they've yeah. they had two. What was it? Two draft picks last year. I mean, or, Miller and yes, and he had a guard teammate. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Forget and that, that you know they both went, you yeah. know, probably first and second round, I believe. Mm-hmm. So it's just like they have those scorers, I mean, they have those big time players. Yeah, and and I mean, looking forward a lot, like like the women's team. I mean, you take care of business at Vanderbilt, you get an opportunity at Bama. You have to beat Arkansas. You can't go into against Arkansas no. against an Arkansas team that is is uh, you know for all intents and purposes, there's unless Subpar. they <laughs> unless they unless they win the conference tournament, they're not making. In still tournament. No. Um, they have to make a big statement, yeah. and I don't see them doing it. And then that. you get Tennessee again, this time on the road. You know, going 2-0 against Tennessee would, would in my that opinion. That is huge. In my opinion, that would, that would, bring, that would lock That would bring your seat up a lot, too. That I mean, would, you're not. Yeah. You're looking at possibly, what are we, seventh now? I think there. I think there'll be a projected nine seed. Would be my guess. Okay, nine. Well, um, it, you know they they go two and zero oh against them. I think. I think you bump up seven. This five. is my bold take. I think with games against you, let's say hype. You know, just looking at hypotheticals, you beat Vanderbilt, Arkansas, and Mississippi State. And let's say let's throw in Georgia. Say you beat those four. Say those are your your goods, and then you get Bama, Tennessee, South Carolina, and then Ole Miss. Say you go two and two, three and one there. I'll say it. I th- and and this with the how both seasons have shaped up in in the minds of of Aggie fans. This team has the chance to have a higher seed than last year. It was just unfortunate we went against we we were matched up against. A white hot Penn State team. Oh yeah, they were. They oh, were. They were. It was. Fire. It was a night. It was a nightmare for first matchups. As, as first matchups go, you know, it's and it was hard to watch. And again, this may make this may make Aggie fans also cringe. Um, on paper, they are still technically a chance that this team could compete for an SEC regular season title. On paper, I'm not calling anything, but. The two teams that are on top right now are Alabama and South Carolina. Mm-hmm. If you beat them, they still need one more loss. Both doable, though. But both doable. And then if you win out, so like I'm saying, it, it's not. It's a very tough road. It's not guaranteed. It's yeah. n- <laughs> like it, it's a very. It would be. It would. It would be more impactful that they won out than it would be that they won the regular season title to be completely honest with you because that's a huge feat yeah. i'm not calling that but it's still an on paper thing that could happen there's still a lot of opportunity to bump bump up your seed line like braxton said even beyond like a seven like last year i think you know if this team surprises some people i think they could be a six i i hope so i i mean you know as i said last week your lips to god's ears because at this point <laughs> We, you know, we as Aggie fans, we we need this. We we need Aggie men's basketball to, you know, make it over the hump. It feels like they've fallen short several times the past few years. Like you said, they're off and on, and this year just it feels like they're kind of on right now. Yeah, and I mean they just got to keep being competitive. And I mean, 
that's that's all you can ask of them to play play Aggie basketball, and people aren't going to like how poor they shoot from three most of the time. <laughs> don't matter, man. It, this, hey, it may not yeah. be pretty, but it's a win. Yeah, I mean, I mean hey, you'll then, take it, especially in the tournament. You know, South Carolina, the kind of the shocker uh, this season. You get them at home, which didn't know how big that was going to be last year when you blow them out by fifty something. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, when they look like that last year, I mean, you yeah. you don't expect much going into the next year, but they have turned things around. Yeah, so I mean, that's. Turn the around, you know, even an understatement there. There, if they've Whoa. night and day, you know, you're projected, you're projected a and M a, a ten seed right now playing shocker Texas. They're always <laughs> will try to find a way to do that. How surprising um, is that? But oh. this, but this team with how they played against Tennessee could legitimately be be in in, in position to be in position come March. And it all starts right from the get go. You can't play passive. You like mm. again, it, like in that Tennessee game, Wade goes crazy just immediately. Yeah, our defense goes like it needs to start right off the bat. It can't. There can't be a slow half. build up. Yeah. No, you got to start mm. right out the gate. You know, in yeah. their face, and especially against Texas, you know that rivalry. You know how that goes. I mean, it's just. Do I, do I ever think they will do that? No, negative. Well, this is the last year they'll have, ever have a chance to do that, really, because it'll be the same conference next year. But, yeah, no, like Justin said, you've got to keep going, foot on the gas, you know, keep keep All chugging. All gas, no brakes. All, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know if I want to repeat. You know, you know I had to. <laughs> yeah, so they for, – for both for both men's and women's, they really have to just keep going, keep pushing – and and keep keep that momentum going forward. But for us, thank for this episode. Our momentum stops here. This has been the Home Tour Podcast. I'm Hunter Mitchell. I'm Braxton Dora. I'm Justin Chen. We will see y'all next time.